All right, guys, welcome back. So this month I finished a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And it was a book that um, select brothers here in the Monk Mode group, we were all reading. And uh, it really in, it, in itself is a book about stoicism, but within our culture and how it's culturally, culturally related to stoicism um, just in these times. So I wrote down a couple of definitions of what Stoicism is from online. I looked it up on Google, and then I have my own version from the dictionary, and I wanted to just share them with you. I'm also kind of playing off at the last video that I did on being Stoic. Um, I have a little bit more better of an ex explanation now, too, just with what Stoicism is. So here it goes. Stoicism, the endurance of pain or hardship without a display of feelings and without complaint. And then directly below the first definition, I thought that this was perfect. It also means an ancient Greek school of philosophy founded at Athens by Zero et Sitem. The school taught that virtue, the highest good, is based on knowledge and that the wise live in harmony with the divine reason, capital R in reason, also identified with fate, capital F in fate, and Providence, capital P, Providence. So those three words, very important in Stoicism. That governs nature and are indifferent to the vicissitudes of fortune and to pleasure and pain. Now, the definition, the next definition I'm about to read to you is from a Webster's Dictionary. So... This guy right here, second edition Webster's Dictionary, I think it's that extended, unabridged, the 20th century Webster's Dictionary from the 1980s. It's like 1988, I think, off the top of my head. I'll have to look at the copyright. Anyway, stoicism, a real or pretended indifference to pleasure or pain. The bearing of pain without betraying feeling. Stoical behavior in passivity. So, as you can see, <clears throat> those two definitions still haven't really changed over time. And it's been pretty close to, well, it's been a long time now. So, <laughs> uh, getting back to the book um, and the subject of stoicism. It still essentially means doing the hard things, but with just a little bit more. It talks about, really, pretty much the definition speaks for itself. If we're dealing with pain or any kind of hardships in life, we need to, dis we need to display our virtue in life. We need to display our, vir our virtue in life during those times. Things that keep us level-headed and won't rock the boat even further with what we're dealing with in life. Because really, just, you know, in, how do I put this? As an example, any, any good fighter usually is calm. They don't get angry and they don't go rambunctious and go on a rampage, essentially. They, they stay calm, they stay collective. They have a casual peace as they're moving back and forth. And how they do that is they train over time. Stoicism essentially is training yourself in your mind, your body, your mind, and your emotions to endure the hardships and be virtuous at the same time. So you're not overreactive with anger. You're not overjealous. You don't hate anybody. You're calm, you're collective. You're calm, you're collective. Yet you're going to express how you feel about things and what the I I. I ideologies are, or in, in a sense the ideas are, that you're debating with, if you're debating with an individual or if you're having an argument of some sort, yet you're still going to have the upper hand because you're going to be in a state, in a place where none of that matters. It, The emotions that come into play, you're, you're going to be in control of that. I mean, what would that be like to have control over your own emotions and you wouldn't have to lash out, essentially, at, at any given second and disrupt or throw off the entire um, situation and 
it, it just falls it, it just falls into in, into that category. Um, just throw out that whole situation in in the fact that it's going to get disrupted. It's going to go sideways. So stoicism is definitely a practice, though. Um, one of the things that they did to collect their thoughts was between meditating, praying to the gods, they walked out in nature. They thought about their philosophies and their words that they were going to put on paper that we now read about now, still today. And it's going to last centuries longer. Those those guys are dead. They're, they don't get a second chance at life. They're not going to come back. The only thing that they left with us is their legacy in, in paper. And then some of our teachers nowadays, the people that are running the big businesses, running the countries, running big corporations, uh, bosses and middle class jobs, they're the ones that are learning from these men, learning from these great people that, that taught Stoicism and incorporating it into society and into our culture. So that's how their legacy is moving on and living on. And that's how we can develop our own legacies and make it live on. Thanks to things like social media nowadays, we're able to do things like this, where we can have channels. And we can promote ourselves out there into the world, onto the World Wide Web, which gets our message out into the world. Because everybody's going to die one day. And I'm either going to leave something in writing from, from a pen on a piece of paper, or I'm going to do it in a video that they're going to have as a file after I'm long gone. That's going to be my history. That's going to be my legacy, essentially. So getting back to the book, Ryan Holiday did a really good job of just explaining how it tied into our culture. And I had a couple points that I wanted to read off, um, just a couple points that I got out of the book, and this is what it meant to me. And this is what I found the most insightful about the book. I skipped to the last chapter and went to well, it was past the last chapter. There was an additional chapter with the uh, Audible. If you guys haven't heard of Audible.com, check out Audible.com. You can check out some of your favorite books on there um, if you're reading them right now. And you can download them for about $14.95 a month. And depending on the book or if you get a credit, you'll get one credit when you sign up. And depending on how much the book costs, um, it could cost you a credit or you can get your first book free. And then each additional month, um, as a sus subscriber, they give you one additional credit, too. So as you keep your membership, you get free books, about one book a month. The rest of them you're going to have to... Uh, <laughs> neighbors. The rest of them you're going to have to pay for. So it's a really, it's a really great subscription. It's a really great, great website Amazon provides. So I love audible.com. I love listening to books now. So... Anyway, Ryan Holiday's having this interview with this guy, and they go off of these points, and I thought that they were very important, and it's just what I got out of the book. So, he stated that one aspect is, of stoicism is having money, and is having money, for example, having money. Successful uh, or a successful career, you, you come into money through a successful career, and it, it, sometimes it can be by luck. Some people get lucky and they just, boom, they, they're a millionaire overnight. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're a millionaire overnight. They, they get to live in Vegas now because they can afford it, you know. Um, coming into a fortune, so, or an inheritance. So some people will get an inheritance. Some people will come into money through family. Or mentors will give them money. We'll get to that in a minute. Mentors would give them money. People from high, higher jobs, CEOs, things of that nature. And it doesn't say anything good about you, nor does it say anything bad about you. You see, guys, money is temporary. It's a tool. And a lot of people can get blinded by money. I mean, uh, so guy, some guys were talking about this earlier today. And money can easily blind us. Because we can just get into this motion of just, oh man, I just got this, now I can get that, now I have enough money to save up for this, and I can go on and move on to that. But when really it's more about minimalism. The minimalist lifestyle is living with less than what you have or what you own. Having more money creates more problems like that. 
Now, where the aspect of it, that could be the aspect of it being bad. Now, the aspect of it being good, in a sense, is you're able to afford things. You can use it as a tool, like I had just said. Using it as a tool to make things in life work for you. That's the best way that I could put it. And essentially, that's what I do with my job, my jobs that I have right now. My money that I use is a tool. Granted, you can come into a place where you're making enough that you can save and then invest into something later. Whether it's a company or your own business, you can invest in that later on in life. Compound interest is another thing to take into account with that, with money. With compound interest, that will help you with the extra money that you have and that you're saving and putting aside to invest later on. Moving on. So the one reason why Ryan Holiday called the book The Obstacle is the Way and it w and was written was because the struggle or obstacle that you're struggling with is a practice that Marcus Aurelius um, did back then. Not to block, um, not to be blocked in life, but to practice virtue. So this literally, the obstacle is the way, was literally something that Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoics, you ever check out his book, Meditations? It's phenomenal. I'm reading through it. I'm getting so much out of it. It's so dense. Each page is so dense. It just feels like a fire hydrant of, of wisdom coming at me in, in my mind all in one time, and it's just mind-boggling. And Marcus Aurelius did this. It, it's it's struggling through the hardships to practice virtue, and that's what he did. Um, he mentioned in the book that as an emperor, things were different back in those days. And so as an emperor, you got to do a lot of things. And he, he could have had anything that he ever wanted, but he chose not to go with those things. He chose not to make those choices. And that said a lot about him as a Stoic and being an emperor running a country, running a nation. So, with that, that was one of the reasons why Ryan Holiday even called the book The Obstacle is Away, because it was something that a Stoic practiced, and that's how he got his idea. I thought that was very interesting. I thought it was a good point for the book. And my last point that I got is a mentor, and going into mentorship. Remember how um, I just stated that uh, a mentor can give you money and coming into a fortune because having money is not necessarily a good thing for you, but yet it's not necessarily a bad thing for you. A mentor is anyone who you learn from, who gives you advice and teaches you things without you even meeting them. And, and it, it can be in person or just teachings and philosophy. That last part kind of blew my mind because... And it's something that I've already taught myself is that for for many years I was looking for mentors for people that I could learn from in my life and I just couldn't find them anywhere. I just couldn't find any decent people because a lot of them would be on the bandwagon and they'd fall right off. Men that were older than me, like in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I was just like, you know, where, where are all these people at, you know? And the biggest thing for, for me was that a mentor, a mentor does not have to be someone physically present here with me. I I can learn from mentors and people from different aspects of life, from books. And then the light bulb just finally went on. I could learn them from books. I could learn them from teachings. I could learn them from videos, um, things of that nature. So a mentor essentially is you learning what they're teaching and what their what their advice is that they're giving to you in that in that moment. Not not necessarily you. It could be a lecture, it could be in a book, it could be at a conference, it could be somewhere, and you don't actually get to meet them, you don't actually get to study underneath them and see them day after day after day after day after day. That's what the Stoics did back then, back in those days, the Greeks and Greeks and Roman culture, culture, Greeks and Roman culture, they were around each other daily to, to practice, because that's how things were. Nowadays, we have everything at the tips of our fingers that we have so much information at the tips of, of our fingers that we can do everything ourselves. We're very independent. A lot of people wouldn't agree with that statement, but it's pretty much a fact. I mean, I'm filming a video right off of my phone. How do we not have, informa how do we not have information at our fingertips? So, 
with that, I could just learn things without meeting people. It took me a couple of years to finally realize that, but then I realized, well, I'm reading all these books, I'm learning all this stuff, but nobody's telling me to put it into practice, so you know, what's the deal? Then I finally realized I just had to take responsibility and ownership for what I was learning and what was being taught to me through the books and through the teachers and mentors that were teaching me subconsciously and unsubconscious and on un, un, unconscious on unconsciously <laughs> there I'm almost done guys so with that that's what I learned is that you can have anybody can be your mentor you don't have to meet them in person you can learn from their teachings and their legacies that they leave behind in their books in their videos in their writings in the temples that they built on, on, on their philosophies there. So with that, guys, uh, really great book. It's a great read. The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. If you like listening to books, get it on Audible. Get it for a cheap price. And if you're a reader, you can buy it on eBay or Amazon. They got good, good prices, too. You'll only get it in a hardcover, but it'll last you longer. I love hardcover books. So anyway, with that, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned, guys. I got more content coming for you soon. You guys have a good night. I'm going out tomorrow night. I'm going to go see some friends and hang out and have a good time. But for now, I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go to the gym. Take care, guys.